Yep, I'm working on trying to get this tank washer together. And I dropped that in the dirt. I'll go wash that off now. But we got the new motor. I was able to salvage the studs. Between the two motors, I got enough studs out. These are available. They're 35 bucks for a set of four. And I got a new seal. This is a new gasket that goes in between here and that wand piece. I got a new impeller, but it looks like I don't need it. I don't see nothing wrong with this one. No cracks in it or anything. So I'll put the old one in. I'll keep that one for a spare. They're only like 12 bucks. Seal was like 11 bucks or something. So what I got here, motor, seal, gasket, and impeller was 400, 420, 27 dollars, I think it was, 29 dollars shipping. I called the nearest dealer, Hill Supply here, Monday. They had one on the shelf, but it was a stainless steel one for 700 bucks. And I'm not putting no 700 bucks into this. I don't see no point in buying a stainless steel one. Before that rusts out, you got more of a chance the motor shorting out from a lightning storm or something, I figure. So that was 329. I got that through parts department online up in Connecticut. I ordered that Monday afternoon. They shipped it Tuesday and got it today. But uh yeah, that's what I figure. It's the exact replace. It's the replacement motor recommended for it. I mean, it's you see, it's different than the motor that was on there. But things change over the years. So I said, just working on here now, trying to get this back together. This piece has got to go on here and over them bolts. I'm gonna have to have two hands to do that. Yeah, this is the gasket that came off it. Yeah, there's probably no reason why that won't work. But I figured, you know, going all new, might as well put the new in. And I dropped that on the ground. Jeez, I'm good at that. Hardest part is figuring out which way because this one's got external capacitors and the bigger connecting box, which direction that all goes on there. But we got it on. Just matter getting everything lined up here now. And I ain't a hundred percent sure which way this goes. I'm pretty sure it goes this way. So that goes on. And then the impeller spins on. And to make sure it's tight, there is a, in the center there, this, can't get a good angle on it, that X there, there's a, you can see it on this one, slot at the end of that shaft. So you just take a screwdriver and stick it in there and then you can, don't need to reef it too much, but make sure it's tight. So I gotta have two hands to do that. Yeah, and after the majority, that's all done. Now, like I say, I'm not sure just which way this makes it work out. I'm assuming this has to be the back. I'm going to put it so the wand, the wand's either you've got to come this side or this side. And I would think I want that to the back side. So I'm going to put the wand coming out this side. And hopefully it'll be balanced right, so... Okay, got that all back on now. So now I just got to figure out how to wire this up. And hopefully it'll work. Ugh. 
Okay, that's good. It doesn't want to fall to the back, so that's a good thing. Yeah, let's see, I need a screwdriver. And I left it out here. Yeah, I had that other company, Granger, where I was looking at motors and they had two. And I said, I don't know if I mentioned it before, the one motor would only run counterclockwise. You couldn't change the direction. And this runs clockwise. And then the other one, I forget what the hell the other one was. There was something about the other one that I wasn't too sure about. Like I said, they would have been about 80 bucks cheaper, 100 bucks cheaper. But, you know, I'd rather spend the extra money, have one, like I said, no bolts in. And hopefully it'll work when I get done here. So let me get that box opened up and see what I got in there. Yeah, I think I got this figured out. It's already wired up for the high voltage. And we got three wires. So one's the ground and the other two are basically hot. Okay, T2 and T3, which is the white and the orange, they're connected together. 7P2 is the brown. That one's left blank. And then I just got to connect one line to the blue and one line to the yellow. T4 is the yellow. Now if I was wiring these up for low voltage, 120, I take the orange and the blue and connect on to one line connect the white and the brown together and then connect the other line and I'm assuming that would be the hot line would go to the yellow because the yellow is a switch in there of some sort probably a thermal switch or something so according to that the white and orange connected together the brown is left blank and I just put a wire nut on that. So I just should have to just connect or connect the other two wires. I'm, I'm gonna connect the white one to this one, the black one to this one, and then the ground would go down to that screw. But I gotta do some wire stripping here yet. I got the strain relief, but I wish the hell I had a watertight one. I thought I had one around here and I can't find it, so. Yeah, I'll get some wires connected here. All right, I got the wires coming in. I said I don't think it matters which way I connect these because both the white and the black are hot. Because you measure across them, I get 240. Measure against each one individually, it's 120. So it shouldn't matter which way these go. But connected to ground. Brown is supposed to be left single, orange and white connected. Okay. So now go turn the breakers back on. And either I'm gonna have a spark show or the thing's gonna run. Okay. Yeah, get this out of the road. Water's gonna flow. Okay, that just turned to random. So, if it's in the same spot I was mucking there yesterday, the other day when I turned this on, water should start flowing. And if it's on the wash cycle to pump, that should kick on. So, we'll see. And it runs. Yeah. 
Okay. So now we're going to advance it to the next cycle. Yeah. I guess I got to tighten that clamp up. So hold on. Okay, I just stuck that hose on there. It didn't tighten the clamp down. So I was spraying water, so. Now, this ain't gonna spray water out because this has gotta be tilted up into the tank. Yeah, maybe if I tilt it back like that, it will do it. So we'll see if it sprays, but. Because that's what it does, it just keeps pumping water in, water recycles in, runs back along this pipe, and comes back out that wand, so. Yeah, go until the pump kicks on. Thing might be running backwards. It's running clockwise. I guess maybe it just won't run until that pipe is full, so I might have to wait until tomorrow to see if this thing's going to actually pump. But at least the motor's running. It was turning in the right direction. It was running clockwise. Yeah, that's the new impeller there. And yeah, it should turn this way. It should be turning clockwise. And that's the way it's turning, so... Like I say, it might have to be until I get it up in there to have a slug of water in there to be able to push, so. Something don't smell right. Maybe because it's got paint on it. Yeah, I don't see nothing leaking. It's running. Something don't smell right though. Yeah, I guess I'll let it go what it is. I gotta get this buttoned up, but at least that's running. We'll see what from there. So thanks for watching. We'll catch up with you later.